Okay, this is like an update video. And really, it's not really an well, update, but this gear has been on here since about January. This is my existing 80 millimeter refractor. It's an ED80. Uh, it's a 600 millimeter focal length, and it's a Skywatcher. It's just a doublet. I got this used uh, back last October, and still doing pretty good for me right now. I mean, I'm using PixInsight to get my photos looking better, and I'm still happy with it. I'm gonna just use it a little bit longer, see how it is. And that's about it. Um, my previous video, I showed the whole setup with this telescope, um, this 50, mil 50 millimeter guide scope that I got from Amazon. That's where the Lobestar X2 guide camera sits in. It's been still doing pretty good. This Lobestar is a real sensitive camera. I mean, it picks some of the dimmest stars and just guides all night on it. And I'm in a heavily light polluted area. I tried different guide cams and I had terrible results where the graph's just all over the place and you know, failures and things like that where it couldn't guide correctly. But once I put this low star in, it really took over and just started working. It's an expensive camera, but it's well worth it for my environment. I'm in a red zone. And the newest upgrade that's on this whole setup is the Moonlight autofocuser right here with the uh, high step resolution stepper motor. And here's the whole Moonlight autofocus system right here, the whole mechanical piece. Also has, um, manual focus right here but it's all pretty much locked once you go into autofocus and under here you could actually see this little thumb screw you can actually adjust stuff right there like as far as loosening and everything like that but if, once you get it set you don't pretty much don't have to mess with it anymore and as far as the controller this is one part of the moonlight autofocus system right here it's the mini controller v2 i just had it zipped out on my leg right here on the top of my leg and here's a uh, RS, I think it's RS-232 cable, that's what it's called, or serial cable, some people call it, it comes up, plugs in right here. But on here, um, basically got a temperature probe that measures the temperature outside, and that's how it knows to just focus on temperature changes. You can set all that up in um, Sequence Generator Pro 2. And if you want to manually focus, you can just hold these buttons here, like in, out, you adjust how fast you want it to move and all that. I never, sometimes I mess with this stuff if I'm maybe taking pictures of the moon. Other than that, when I'm doing galaxies and nebula, I just let the software autofocus for you. And as far as my cable management, it's the same pretty much um, on my cables, like my dew heaters. It's a dew heater strip right here, a dew heater strip on my guide scope because I do get dew on my guide scope. It, in the wintertime, I had frost on it before I put these heaters on here. My cables just come down like before, plug right into my um, Orion dew zapper heater controller. I just pretty much leave my controls right here, just leave it and set and it's good to go. And of course my um, power supplies, I'm always labeling everything like dew heater power supplies, the camera fan for the ASI 1600 uh, monochrome camera, that's its power supply. And this right here is the power supply for my mount. So basically I have three separate five amp power supplies. Just on there. I know it's overkill, but I'd rather have the headroom with the amps just in case you don't want anything low amperage and have stuff failing like that. And power cords just come down zip tie coil up right here and all zip ties like one big big umbilical and plug to the main power strip this zip tied on this other leg and this main power strip is pretty much loaded up ran out of space so I actually made like one little adapter like this plugs in I plug my laptop in here in the winter time I use a heating pad from my laptop that's in another previous video that sits right here and if I'm using my 8SC doing planets I just have my laptop in this one and I bring a fan sometimes, like a little oscillating fan, plug that in, and it blows on me to keep the mosquitoes off it. That works out pretty good too. Other cables just come around, zip tie into here, because I made custom power cords, custom links to reach everything. On the front I have a pole master that I will always use for polar lining with Polaris. After I pull a line, I just basically coil the cable, sit it right here, it runs all night. And over here is from my slack. I just, my slack loop just right here hangs, just hooks up right here. And that's been working out great for me because you don't really want your all your cable weight just hanging from the USB jacks on it because that over time it creates wear and tear on your jacks. You get loose jacks and then you get loose connections, especially in extreme temperatures. So you want to take that weight off of your jacks. So that's why I just bring the cable up, just hook it on here, and all that weight is pretty much held on right here. And it's not hanging on enter your plugs back here because over time I'm telling you these jacks do wear out. I do a lot of repair on electronics at my job and a lot of our main problem with our photographers and things is USB jacks getting loose from the solder connections. 
So when this cable just comes down and sling, you know, hangs right here. It just basically comes down and pretty much loops up, comes right here. This is just my um, autofocus cable. I didn't really zip tie this together because when I put my ASC on here, I'm not using autofocus, so I just keep it separate. It just all come right here, loops together. Pretty much everything plugs this to this insignia. It's a three, uh, four port USB 3.0 powered hub. You gotta have a powered hub when you're doing this stuff because a lot of devices pull power and it has to have its own, the hub has to have its own power supply. This is like a little $25 one I got at Best Buy. And so far I made it through this past winter of, our, of all our temperatures going to like minus four degrees outside. But let's see how it holds up this summer when we have the humidity and the dew getting on here. If it'll fail or if it'll last, who knows? Um, a Celestron connector right here for the, the actual mount. Comes out the USB jack. Everything is cold up here, plugs in. And I have one main USB umbilical that comes out of my power hub. And that's right here. It's 3.0, plugs to the laptop. Same thing with my power supplies. Everything comes here. One main umbilical power cord goes to uh, like an extension cord or something like that. Try to keep it simple. And try to keep everything neat and organized. And this is the same back as before. Uh, eight position filter wheel ZWO and a ZWO ASI 1600 monochrome cooled camera. So the only main update is the uh, Moonlight autofocus system right here that's been working out very well as far as my, my stars keeping everything. Because in the winter time I, I did everything I could. I have my, um, this comes with a, this telescope has a regular Crayford uh, rack and pinion focus dual speed. I've tightened up with pliers, Allen wrenches, everything I could try. Even, I mean, even taking it apart, looking at instructions where you could adjust the friction so it won't slide. Still, after about two hours or three hours of um, imaging in the wintertime, the focus was still slip from the contraction of the metals and everything like that. So my stars are coming out bloated and oblong kind of shape. But once I switch to this, it keeps, every, I have it set for every hour autofocus and every two, to, I think two or three degree temperature drop autofocus and on every filter change autofocus. Haven't had a problem once I put this in. So that's basically it for this uh, update as far as um, my setup and just give anybody ideas on how I do cable management for my setup because I've seen all kinds of pictures where guys have cables everywhere. I like to keep stuff neat. It's easy to find things, easy to troubleshoot. If something was wrong, you just know where to look because everything's labeled. So yeah, I label everything. See like uh, AVX power cord, uh, everything's labeled so I know what plug goes where. I know where to check. It just keeps it simple. So it might give you guys any ideas if anybody's looking at cable management ideas. That's just how I do my setup. It works for me and it works for my um, AVX mount. I'm still using the AVX. A lot of people hate on that mount. I can't complain. I'm still going, I could go five minutes, no problems. I haven't pushed it past that as far as exposures. But mine is still holding pretty good. So that's it for the setup.